What's happening folks, my name is Robbie, I'm a finance broker from Edinburgh and today we are reacting to asking first class passengers how they got rich. I love these videos, I love the videos where people are asking someone how did you get that car, how are you flying first class, how are you doing what you're doing, what do you do for a living. I think they're very insightful, nice, to the point, 10-15 minutes long, almost like a podcast without it being an hour and a half long. This video is by Mark Tilbury, I'm sure you've seen him on TikTok, YouTube, he's, he's everywhere when it comes to personal finance and business in Britain, but we're not messing about today, we're getting straight to the video, so here we go. This is me asking a first class passenger how they got rich. You see, I was travelling from London to Miami first class, which cost me about $6,000, which got me thinking, what do these other first class passengers do for a living that- Six grand. Six grand doesn't sound like that much for first class because first class is a step up from business class, which is already expensive. Enables them to afford these luxury tickets. But unfortunately, it didn't all go to plan. I'm speaking to all my customers. Yes. What is it you're doing? Right, here's the plan. I've Love that. Just having chit chat with people, the airline has a problem with it because presumably bothering the the other passengers. Just booked some first class tickets for me and my cameraman Tom. These tickets come with free lounge access where you can enjoy delicious food, take a nap on the comfy day beds and even freshen up with a shower in the spa area. But unfortunately, we're not going to be doing any of those lovely things. Instead, we're going to use this time to interview as many people as possible. The sacrifices I make for you guys, I could be enjoying a nice complimentary massage instead. But there's I like the idea of making these videos about travel and business class flights, nice hotels and things like that. I'm flying business class for my honeymoon next month and I was told immediately by my fiance that I will not be filming anything about flying business class and making any TikToks or YouTube videos about it. I'm meant to be enjoying my honeymoon, not trying to make videos about it, which I get. I'll be taking videos for myself though, because, well, I'm looking forward to it. One major flaw to our plan. Places like this are very secretive, which means if we get caught filming, it could have serious consequences. As soon as I entered the lounge, a guy in a sparkly outfit caught my eye. So I headed over to have a chat. He explained that he used to own a jewelry store that he recently sold for a nice amount. That shirt is absolutely awful. The jacket's really bad as well, but the shirt is not very good amount of money. So how did you start out in business? Because that's always a key question a lot of our viewers ask. I worked for six independent companies with four or five shops. And what did that give you by working for multiple Exper people? Experience. And um, I opened a shop in Stamford. I mean, I say to a lot of people, gain experience is better than necessarily gaining qualifications. What would yeah. you say about that? Getting experience. Mm. You've got to love what you do. You gotta love it. I couldn't agree more with this. I don't. I mean, so far, I feel like I learned nothing about really a cool story about this guy. I thought we might get more from him, given that he's wearing leather trousers, a gold shirt, and a sparkly jacket, and a funny hat as well. And have any qualifications. I actually left school when I was 16 and became a millionaire in my 20s. This isn't to say college and university is pointless, but in most cases, experience often steals the spotlight from qualifications. There's a brilliant quote from Sylvester Stallone that sums this up perfectly, and it goes something like this. The only purpose of a college degree is to show your potential boss that you turned up to class for three to four years in a row, completed a series of assignments reasonably well and on time. So if they hire you, there's a semi-decent chance you'll show up every day and not mess their business up. Things were starting to get really tense in the lounge. I could feel the staff constantly watching us. So I knew our time was limited. What advice would you give to any youngster nowadays starting out? Well, I think work hard. Work hard is the, the advice. That's my guess. The one piece of advice is is save, you know, don't spend your income if you can avoid it. You know, make sure you put money aside. So live within your means for sure. Well, yeah. This conversation really hit home for me. I've seen multi-millionaire friends lose it all in an instant and others whose lives are controlled by debt. But saving is just one side of the story. You need to invest. This graph shows the growth of $10,000 invested in the S&P 500 index from January 1980 to December 2018. The person 
I'm a big fan of investing in index funds. If you watch my other videos, you'll know that I break down my whole portfolio on a quarterly basis and I talk about it on TikTok and I'm always banging the drum of investing in index funds, investing your money instead of just saving it. But I opened this video to hear the stories of the people flying first class and that's not what I'm getting so far. And they invested and kept their money in the stock market without drawing it out actually made the most money. Personally, I would invest in accounts like a Stocks and Shares ISA in the UK and a Roth IRA in the USA. These accounts are so powerful as they allow you to grow your money over time for retirement tax-free. It's so important to ensure that the platform you use for investing is something called automated investing. So the money is just taken from your account and you can forget about it. So that whole spiel about index funds and things like that was an ad. So I cut it out of the video. Um, the company is not paying me to put it in my video, so it's gone. Instead, here's an ad about me. Hello everyone, I'm just interrupting this video for a quick plug. If you're watching this video, you probably already know who I am, but for the benefit of those who don't, I'm Robbie and I'm a specialist finance broker. This means I help property investors, property developers, and small to medium business owners with funding on their projects. That's buy to let mortgages, bridging loans, buy to let mortgages for portfolios, development finance, and commercial mortgages. If you're a property developer, investor, or business owner, email me on this email address or send me a direct message on Instagram to find out how I can help you. Right, plugs over, back to the video. I was about to interview a guy that worked in financial technology when my cameraman Tom got a tap on the shoulder and it took a very serious turn. Yes. What is it you're doing? Our names were taken, put on record and we were ordered to stop filming. Honestly, I felt like I was a criminal. Apparently, by speaking to people in the lounge, we had broken their privacy rules and regulations. If we were caught filming again, there would be a devastating consequence. They would terminate our tickets and still charge us the full amount. The cheek of it for the next- That's surely not allowed. Six grand. I mean, 12 grand. Just take your tickets, not give you the money back because you were filming in the lounge. That sounds a bit questionable. Next hour, we sat in the lounge planning our next move. The staff were all watching us like hawks, and we knew if they saw us even raise a camera, it would be game over. Fortunately, we were able to board the plane without any further issues. I mean, he's holding a camera and he's been filmed inside the plane, so how's that allowed? Once we were airborne, it was time to take the risk and feel more. That doesn't look like first class to me. First class is usually bigger and more open. I mean, I think this guy's pretty tall. I think he's quite massive actually, but that looked awfully cramped for 6,000 pounds per person, still. Or interviews. And you know me, I love a risk. So I've managed to snag an interview with Curtis Tilbury from the Strike It Big podcast. Anyway, Curtis, how do you make your money? Well, obviously the podcast is a big part of that, but I run a production company. This is another ad. An ad for the podcast this time. Fuck me. Company that owns various different shows on YouTube. So what is your net worth currently at? It's over a million. I have about 13 people working for me at the moment, so yeah, no, it's a good business. How did you actually build that business out? Where did it all start from? I started making free videos for lots right, of different people. Hang on. Did you say free? Well, you didn't charge people. No, I did it. At the start, when you're trying to build your skills as a videographer, which is what I was, no one really trusts you and doesn't really want to pay you if they haven't seen what you've done. So you have to build up a portfolio. So I did everything from wedding videos to shooting club videos. So how do you go about going from a very small startup, giving away free content, to actually having people on your staff, as it were, being a real company? It's, it's all about need. <laughs> I don't like being cynical. And I've worked in a family business, owned shares in a family business. I'm not ignorant to being involved in working with family, but he's just interviewing his son here. He's not interviewing people who are flying first class and finding out their story. He's just doing a little plug for his son. I'm not finding this as entertaining as I hoped. That's rich coming from me. 1,600 subscribers down and then when you niche and become an expert in your field you can charge more lots of people think that by doing everything you have a much wider market and although this is true to some extent would you rather be operated on by a surgeon or a GP I can guarantee that you chose surgeon 
But why? Naturally, we feel safer in the hands of an expert. And this is the same across all aspects of life. So my advice on how to become an expert would be, number one, find your niche. You need to find a niche that has demand which you can add value to. Number two. So this video is providing good value, but it's not, it's not what the, what the video advertised and that's annoyed me. I don't like to be clickbaited and that's what's happened here. And that's what's happened to you if you're watching this as well. Gain practical experience. Try to experience different areas within your chosen niche to gain a wide range of skills. Number three, continuously learn. You need to stay updated with trends and developments within your niche. Don't be late to the party. And number four, build a professional network. There's one thing better than being an expert, and that's being an expert with expert friends. The staff were starting to take notice of us filming, so I quickly began chatting to a very interesting man who set foot in America with just $40 in his pocket and became... He looks quite wealthy. He looks... He looks rich. ...rich by starting two different businesses. What would you say to your younger self if you were starting out again to gain say the wealth and the, the great life that you've had so far? Risk management. Maybe the poor, most underrated issue in business for entrepreneurs. He sounds rich as well. It's risk management. Everything has risk. Yes, of right? course. And it's understanding those risks and mitigating those risks where you may not have the knowledge base or the experience. The fear of failure is a huge problem in today's society and it holds many people back. Just think, if someone can come to America, we just... We're getting nothing from people flying first class. I think he's... I think we've got about 19 words from people flying first class, which is the whole premise of the video. I'm not pleased. $40 in their pocket and become a millionaire by taking calculated risks, then why can't you? Honestly, if I hadn't taken the leap to quit my job and start my own business after being bullied by my manager, I wouldn't be wealthy today. All my millions can be traced back to that one big risk. Here in the UK, six out of 10 people fear taking risks in life. But why? Well, Two thirds worry about the consequences, while the other third fear the possibility of failure. This shows that most people have the tendency to play it safe and avoid stepping into the unknown. But consider this, playing it safe could be the biggest risk you ever take. Before I could interview That's true. anyone else, I received the dreaded tap on the shoulder from the air service manager. He asked to speak to me at the first class bar. To my surprise, he wasn't annoyed, quite the opposite. He was interested in being in my video. So I thought I could do a little digging into the types of customers he looks after in first class. So we get um, celebrities, we get a lot of business customers, and then we have people that are maybe new money, they might want the lottery and things like that. What's the sort of age group do you get in, uh, in the first class? Area? Again, very. 30 to 55 is the average, I think. You have so many entrepreneurs nowadays as well, who are very, very young. You'll see them up there, completely broad age range. It's really cool to- That does not answer the question, which then means the fact that I guessed was pointless. Here that there are more and more young entrepreneurs flying first class. According to the New York Times, major US airlines are expanding their fancy seats by 25 to 75%. But why is the demand increasing? Well, one of the main reasons for this is that making money online has become incredibly easy. You can now make a living from all sorts of online opportunities. By the way, I'm running a totally free challenge to help you earn an extra 2K this month. It's That's it. He's punted too much. He's advertised a trading and investment platform, his own son and their podcast, and now the $2,000 challenge. As much as I like Mark's videos on TikTok, done. The video's over. I'm not watching any more ads. This video was not what it advertised, asking first class passengers how they got rich. He didn't find out how a single person got rich other than this man started a business. This man worked in finance. That's not giving us anything, and I'm disappointed by that. As I said, I'm gonna be flying business class in about five or six weeks for my honeymoon. I won't be filming it, but what I will be doing is asking people, what do you do? Because I like knowing. Maybe I'll make a mental note of what sort of jobs people do, and I'll make a video about it later, but I am under strict orders not to be filming on the plane, in the lounge, in the resort, on the honeymoon, 
None of it. And that's fine. One thing I will say before the video ends is the last time I flew business class, I got use of the business class lounge in Manchester Airport and I met Ross Kemp. So that was pretty cool. And then on the way back, I met Peter Andre. So good networking opportunity, maybe. I have no professional use for networking with Ross Kemp or Peter Andre, but pretty cool nonetheless. Next week's video will be much more insightful. It'll be a portfolio update, breaking down my entire portfolio, stock, shares, crypto. And the next reaction video I do, I will check to see if the video is clickbait first, because I'm not pleased about this. Not pleased at all, Mark. Anyway, thank you as always for watching, folks. I have set myself the target of posting one video per week for 2024, and I intend to do that. So stick around. I'll try and make some good videos. Some of them might be not so good. I'm aware this is one of the not so good ones, but I now have an upload schedule to try and maintain. So I will be posting this video, even though I'm disappointed at Mark Tilbury and his clickbait. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week. Take it easy.